Hardy's Friday Night Blitz is sponsored by Hardy's, Don Hudson Insurance, Mockadoos, Wicked Diesel, and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Ah, yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hoping your day is wonderful and blessed. Welcome to Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, week six of the high school football season. The Midway Point highlights of 15 games, and we kick off the action with our game of the week. Now, the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz game of the week. Sponsored by Don Hudson Insurance. Our Hardy's Friday Night Blitz game of the week for week six takes us to Highlander Heaven in a battle of Three Rivers District Unbeatens for the second straight week as the 4-0 Glimmer Highlanders are hosting the 5-0 Rapper Bobcats. This is the 28th meeting. Rafford leads the series 14 to 13, but Glenver has had Rafford's number. They won the last three meetings, in fact, all by a total of seven in points, including last year in Rafford 37 to 34. The Highlanders had the week off, while Rafford beat Allegheny 49 to 22 last week. Let's go to Highlander Heaven. It's a big one over at the stadium. We get the party started in the first quarter. Brody Doya, he's going to hand the ball off, but there's a fumble on the play, and Rafford's Reese Honecker would recover. A few plays later, though, the Bobcats. Yes, the Bobcats are going to march down the field, do a little something about Landon Clark to Luke Woodard. Luke, I'm in the end zone. Touchdown! The Cats will convert the two point conversion, so it's 8 0 Radford. Glimmer will get the ball back. Doyot's going to go to the air. He's going to get some. Hater eight, it's Woodard. He scored a touchdown. He got a pick. Way to go with the turnover. Radford back in the driver's seat. This was a neat play. How about Clark? Handing off to Cecil Taylor, who goes to the air. It's Max Knight. MK touchdown in the back of the zone. The Cats take a 15 to nothing lead. Later, more Bobcats back in the red zone. They're paying rent there. Clark fakes the handoff. He's going to call his own number. Jukes and jives. Touchdown. Ravert up 22 to zip. Second quarter, Ravert would have their way with Glenver all night with defense. Clark is going to find Brandon Thompson. Into the zone. That's a touchdown. Rafford in control. 29 0 at the half. Rafford makes a statement to go to 6 0 with a 36 3 win over Glenver. Ryan Moy gives us a wrap up from Highlander Heaven. Well, for tonight's game of the week, Radford taking on Glenver. It was all about a defensive performance versus an offensive one, as we usually see from the Bobcats, but they were able to get the job done once again to remain undefeated on the season. Uh, we got a chip on our shoulder. Um, it feels like every game we're hated because we're undefeated. Um, but we come out, we have our game plan. We do what we do, we do what we do in practice, and our game plan, we set it perfectly, so we're good. You know, I felt really good about the plan coming in. Uh, you know, I feel like our execution was 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 pretty flawless. Uh, so it's a credit, it's credit to the staff. It was really credit to the kids. They went out there and they made a ton of plays. Uh, just we just asked for relentless effort for 40, 48 minutes, and we got it. We got it in all three phases. I mean, this is, this game is personal to us. We've lost four straight years, and we wanted to set a statement early, and that's what we did. They were able to get some pressure on them, you know, and that's kind of our MO. That's kind of how we play defense. We want to attack, and those guys did a great job, uh, you know, getting pressure to a really good quarterback. Man, uh, you know, they're not giving us a trophy tonight, right? So there's a long way to go. Uh, and that's just the, the absolute truth. Does it feel really good to always win? It does. It does. You know, our guys, our guys like to win. Uh, probably not as much as they hate losing. So certainly, you know, it does feel good. But it's just, it's a small sliver, a celebration, and then we're then we're on to next week. You know, in a hurry. Well, the Bobcats proved that it's not just their offense, but their defense that can turn the tide in games, and they proved it right here at Highlander Stadium. Next on deck, they face James River, and just a quick reminder, they are still undefeated on the season. At Highlander Stadium in Roanoke County, Ryan Moy, WFXR Sports. Thank you so much, Ryan. Staying in Roanoke County in Benton, Bob Paris Stadium, William Byrd taking on their county rivals in K-Spring. Military Appreciation Night. In the house, the Terriers with names of fallen service members from the Vietnam veterans. K Spring, however, would score first as quarterback Garrett Lonker would throw for six hitting Owen Sweeney for the touchdown. That put the Knights up six to nothing, but it was a lead that would not last as William Byrd, they would come back in the second half and they win this matchup 14 to 12 over K Spring. Meanwhile, James River with homecoming dreams. During the end of two-game lose streak, they would host Carroll County, and it was homecoming in Buchanan or Buchanan, depending on how you want to say it. The Cavaliers with the ground game of our Bryce Smoot 
breaking off something proper with a nice little run down the sideline. And it was so nice, let's do it twice. Bryce Smoot running hard, young fella. You got one on the horse collar. After a blocked punt, though, Smoot would get that touchdown there, made it 7-0 Cavs, and Carroll County would get the shutout. They went 14 to nothing. The Knights dropped their third in a row. Off to Appomattox Bragg Stadium, where the Raiders hosting the Alta Vista Colonels. The Colonels were up 30 to seven in the second, and the Raiders, Bra uh, Daniel Bradley, going to break off a nice little run, and he is in the clear. Look at that! The touchdown, cutting the Alta Vista lead to 30 to 14, but the Colonels had an answer all night long, like Lionel Richie. All night long, the Colonel cheerily say, hey, we got some for you, Alta Vista and and the Appomattox team there. How about this? Ladanian Stone rocks his way in for the score. It was 36-14 Alta Vista and the Colonels, they get a big win at Bragg Stadium tonight. 56-16 over Appomattox. Staying in the dogwood, William Campbell hosting Nelson County. Former Glass QB and Tech Santa Andre Kendrick checking out the action. Campbell already up 7-6 and William Campbell, the Generals. EJ Elijah Jackson runs it in for the score. And it was so nice, we had to do a backflip. Yes, gymnastics, I give it a 10 for that flip. Meanwhile, William Campbell again, how about Xavier Day? All day, touchdown. William Campbell will go on to roll the governors of Nelson County, winning that one 31 to six. Coming up, we have Hardy's Friday Night Blitz week two action. We're going over to Patriot Stadium as we check out Patrick Henry as they take on Pulaski County in a River Ridge District matchup. Stick and stay, please. Now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Band of the Week. Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. And welcome back, good peeps, to Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. David the Guzman in the house. And David, you had a tour of the River Ridge District. You made a couple of stops, one at Roanoke and one at Salem. Yeah, Jermaine, thank you very much. On this final Friday of September, Patrick Henry looking to bounce back from its first loss of the season last week against Salem. The Patriots back home tonight, taking on a Pulaski County squad that hasn't won since the opening Friday of the season. The Cougars trying to snap a three game losing skid. The Patriots still without Joey Beasley, the senior quarterback injured his ankle last week against the Spartans. We'll pick things up in the second quarter. Pulaski on fourth down. The Cougars feeling 22, handing it off to number 22, Trevor Gallimore, who refuses to go down until he's over the goal line. Talk about fighting for every inch. Touchdown Cougars. They'd add a two point conversion to get within five, trailing 13 to eight at the half. Then in the third quarter, purple ball, Quiley Carter. You've got a fast car and I want a ticket to anywhere. The junior drives the Patriots into the end zone for the touchdown. It's a two score game, 20 to eight. Still in the third though, the Cougars not giving up. They'll chuck the ball over to Chase Lawrence. The junior able to get over the goal line for the score to get back within five, but it is all smiles from the Patriots tonight who get the win 48 to 22. Meanwhile, Salem hosting Hidden Valley. It did not take long at all for the Spartans to find the end zone here on the punt return from the Titans. It's Peyton Lewis who turns this into a track meet from midfield, avoids the tackles and sees nothing but daylight. The senior giving Salem a 7-0 lead just 50 seconds into the contest on the next Spartans drive. Lewis again handed the ball. He'll rumble his way into the end zone. The future Tennessee volunteer giving Salem a 14 nothing lead. And then just minutes later, how about a hat trick? Who else but Peyton Lewis finds a hole, finds an angle, finds his way home. Salem dominating tonight as the Spartans win 51 nothing. And next up for Salem, the Spartans will travel to Pulaski County. Meanwhile, Hidden Valley still looking for its first win of the year. The Titans have their Roanoke County rivalry game with Cave Spring next Friday as we turn the calendar to October. Jermaine. Thank you so much, David, and I'm sure we'll see those sweaters you've been talking about. A little chill in the air, but you know, we'll get a little weather action. Anyway, we go to Viking Stadium in Roanoke County. The Heritage Pioneers taking on the Northside Vikings in a matchup of two and two teams. Now, this is the first meeting between these teams in five years. 
Heritage on a two-game losing streak, having only scored a touchdown in their last two games. Northside had the week off to prepare. As we go over to Viking Stadium, Heritage leading this one 6-0 in the second. Pioneers at the three-yard line. Zayed Holloway makes it his way. Touchdown. Heritage with a 12-0 lead after the missed two-point conversion. And Northside trying to get back in it. Angel Rigney doing it all, moving around. He's going to run, and he's going to cough up the football with that back hit there. Colton Webster, CW, is going to recover for the Pioneers. That would lead to this. Heritage is Aiden Slash. That's a cool neighbor QB going to the air. Quintess Petty gets it in there. 12-yard touchdown pass, 19-0 Heritage. But again, Rigney trying to drop back to pass, and that Pioneer defense was game tonight. Braylon Horsley is going to get the interception. Heritage ends their two-game losing streak with a 40-7 win over Northside. Our second game featuring a Seminole District team visiting a Blue Ridge District team. Brookville taking on Franklin County. Brookville, they would get on the board first. Elijah Hutchison Hughes, the law firm, gets it in with a two-point conversion. Brookville up eight to nothing. It's now 16 to nothing Brookville, but Franklin County off of a fumble recovery. How about Winston Davenport to David Casey? Casey does the rest. He is gone for the touchdown. Brookville's lead is cut to 16 to six. And the combination was so nice. Let's see it one more again. Again, one more again. Yes, it's going to be Winston Davenport from distance. Going to hook up with guess who? That's David Casey. This combination is so cool. Again, we had to see it again. Touchdown. Brookville had their lead cut to 16 to 13. The Eagles, they come back. They get into the win column with a 26-22 win over the Bees. We started this block in the star seed. Let's end it there. William Fleming Colonels hosting the Halifax County Comets. The Comets coached by former William Fleming head coach right there, Robert Sinsney. And the last time these teams met was back in 2012. Let's go to the first corner. Colonels, Tiwan, Preston, TP, are you with me? An eight yard score, seven nothing Fleming. And then the Colonels, Jasir Preston to Kai. Jo Look at the one handed snag. That was so nice. But Jordan wasn't done with cool catches. How about this? Preston going to KJ. He got one foot in. That's all you need. The cool kids are doing it. 14 0, an 11 yard score there. Then the Colonels, Preston, he went to the air making moves. He's going to try to find someone. You know what? Hey, I'm just going to do it myself. JP just here, Preston running hard. 21 0, Fleming at this point. And the Colonels, they double up the comments 42 to 12. Coming up on the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz with scores and highlights because we do it first. We have our last batch of highlights plus our player of the week with Ryan Moy. Stick and stay, please. And now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, Hardy's Fan Cam. Sponsored by Hardy's. Hardy's Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. Time to get it on. Welcome back to the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz as we're going to take a trip over to Christiansburg. Actually, Christiansburg Blue Demons, perfect 5-0 on the season. Had a big challenge in the form of a multiple state champion in Riverhead. So the Greenville will go. This is the first meeting between the teams up in Greenville. First ever meeting. Riverhead's going to get the party started here. Jonathan Talbert is going to get to the outside. He's going to run all the way down the sideline and he gets it uh, in there, the territory. Meanwhile, uh, Chrisberg had a touchdown here, but the bad snap. So at this point, it's seven to six in the second quarter. But Christiansburg will have the ball. Our man, 100 grand. Tanner Evans breaks off something. He's in a clear touchdown. Blue Demons would go for two, and they would get it. So they would go up 14 to seven. Meanwhile, another Christiansburg possession finds the end zone of Tanner Evans, gets it in. The Blue Demons had a 21 to seven lead going into the locker room at half. But Riverheads, they come back and hand Christiansburg their first loss on the year, 24 to 21. Meanwhile, how about this rivalry? The renewal of the Maroon Maroon Tide rivalry. George with visiting Galax, both teams with some momentum after a tough start on the season. It was a rough start for George with giving up two fumbles to start the game, including this one, which would lead to some George with action or Galax there. Fourth and one, how about Ted Run Tucker T squared getting one into the pay window. 
punches that in. So Galax would be up 14 nothing to the second quarter on a first and 15 from the Georgia West 19 Tommy Jones TJ going for the bomb into the end zone Colton Coombs touchdown Galax. They had the lead 27 to 5 and Galax evens their record at 3 and 3 with a 34 to 19 win over George with pair of three one teams and first year head coaches at these schools Jeremiah Brokenborough for Perry McClure and Zane Quisenberry for Fort Chiswell both teams hungry to do something here in Max Meadows a minute into the first quarter Aaron Pridd he's going to do something carried into the pay window that's a touchdown for Perry McClure with the extra point they would get the lead and then just seven seconds left in the quarter pioneers Leighton Kennedy brings their first and only touchdown of the night and the Pioneers, they would go ahead and get the extra point here as they go to the air. And yeah, there it is right there. That's a touchdown for the Pioneers. So they get one in there. Perry McClure goes on and wins over Fort Chiswell tonight, 22 to 7. North Cross taking the road to face Blue Ridge near Charlottesville. Second quarter, 8 nothing Blue Ridge on a fourth and goal. Tristan Lang tries to run in himself, but he gets stopped on the goal line by Blue Ridge, but the Raiders would not be stopped. Brock Miles is going to call his own number, plows his way in, hands it off to Cam Johnson for the score. North Cross down one at the half. The Raiders, they bounce back to go to four and two with the road win over Blue Ridge, 24 to 15. We wrap up the highlight reel over Vineyard Park. Roanoke Catholic taking on Franklin for the first time. The score tied at eight. We start the second half. Runner Catalyst, Demarcus Brown. What can he do for you? How about take one, juking and jiving? And he is gone to the house for that touchdown. And that would be an 80 yard return, and that would make it 16 to 8, Roanoke Catholic. Franklin comes right back, though. How about Trayvon Torrance? Somewhere in that mass of humanity, you see a score. Yeah, he got it in there. Those are the pay door. It looked like a rugby scrum. Tied at 16, and Franklin would go on to win over. Roanoke Catholic, 36 to 30. Now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Player of the Week, sponsored by Wicked Diesel. Well, this week's athlete doesn't really need an introduction, but I'm going to give you one anyway. Not only did he have over 250 yards and four touchdowns in his team's 44 to 20 win over Pulaski County last Friday, he is the reigning player of the year. And guess what? He is back as your player of the week. Tanner Evans, quarterback safety, Christiansburg High School. It started kind of in the in last week. We knew they scheduled their homecoming game for us. We we really just took it personal. The coaches really just put together a great game plan, and then our O line executed and allowed me and the running backs to just do all we could, and just they created nice gaps for us. It's almost same as the past year. We have. A, Honestly, a whole new mentality, younger guys stepping up, and it just allows the older guys to step into leadership roles and the coaches to not have to do as much and just let the seniors step up and do their thing. To be an extension of Coach Wilkins, what does that mean to you? It's good just knowing that they respect me like they do the coaches and just knowing that they trust me to do everything that I can. The season, the senior class has just really stuck together since middle school, rec ball, we just all stuck it out and we're all playing this year too. Talk to me about who Tanner Evans is now. Really just anything I can be to be honest, just trying to just leave it all out there for the senior year and just show what I truly am to the community and to the school. To put on the number four and just represent my sister's best friend, it just means everything to me. Just knowing that the New River Valley especially gets slept on from like the whole rest of the state. And just knowing that we can go out and show people up and just really show who we are. Christiansburg in general means the world to me. Just to all the supporters, to the administration at the school coming up to you, oh, good game last week. And the people in the school just high-fiving you when you come by just means the world. Up next, we put a wrap on the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. Thank you so much, Ryan. We have our latest unsung hero or heroes in this case and our play of the night. Stick and stay, please. And now, the McAdoo Play of the Night. Sponsored by McAdoo's. Our McAdoo Play of the Night, Radford's Landon Clark hands it off to Cecilia Taylor, who hooks up with Max Knipe in end zone for the touchdown to Bobcats roll tonight. Clark, Taylor, Knipe, the law firm, gets our McAdoo Play of the Night. And now, it's Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Unsung Hero, celebrating those who keep the game moving. Sponsored by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is Unsung Hero time, and this week, the honorees are the North Cross Lower School Great Girls. Now, these group 
of girls are part of the Unicorn Society Animal Rescue Team. Last Friday during the North Cross football game, they held a lemonade and bake sale to raise money for the Roanoke Valley Horse and Rescue. According to the Roanoke Valley Horse and Rescue website, the organization is focused on the prevention of equine abuse. Their paddocks are open to abused, neglected, starved, and slaughtered bound horses. The Roanoke Valley Horse Rescue Inc. provides educational opportunities to the general public on horsemanship, horse care, and safety. And as a North Cross teacher told me they plan on visiting the Roanoke Valley Horse Rescue later this year. They raised $360 during their fundraiser, so congratulations to the North Cross Lower School Grade Girls, this week's Unsung Heroes. Now, if you guys out there have an unsung hero you would like to spotlight on the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, please email me, jfarrell at wfxrtv.com. We appreciate all the candidates for consideration. Well, folks, that does it for this edition of the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. Don't forget, tomorrow, UVA Boston College on our sister station, WWCW2. We'll have this show on wfxrtv.com momentarily. Thank you so much for watching the show. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend and night. Everybody!